In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use the style pane in your Microsoft Word document. A lot of people manually edit or format the document in the text rather than using the style pane, which is like a global formatting tool. So there are two ways that you can access the style pane in your Word document. The one way is the shortcut, which is usually under the Home tab in your Word document. And if you click the little button down here, it opens up more styles, or you can click the button to the side here, which will show you more styles in the document. Alternatively, you can click on style pane. That'll open a dialog box on the right hand side of your document and here you can see all the styles that are available in Word as I have here or you can see recommended styles which is a shorter list of styles. You can see styles that are currently in use. So basically these are the only four styles that are currently in use in this document or you can use the styles that have been set for your document. So these are styles that have been set for this particular document, but perhaps are not being used at the moment. So if you have a style guide that, for instance, requires that the normal text in your document should be font aerial and the size should be 11, you can either use the shortcut buttons to do that, or you can set a normal style globally using the style span. To do that, you can either right click on the particular style that you want to change in the shortcut pane, or you can use the dialog box on the right hand side to find the particular style that you are looking for and modify it there. So you're either using the shortcut and then clicking modify. Alternatively, you can use the right hand side pane over here. And here I've got normal. If I click this arrow over here, I can then click modify style and it opens up this dialog box. So what has been asked of me is to have my normal style formatted using Arial. So you can see I'm already using Arial and the size of the font should be 11. The line spacing should be 1.5. So you'll see that this is already on 1.5 line spacing. If I click OK, this means that my entire document will change to reflect that style. And areas of my document that has not been formatted as normal will not be affected. So you can see here, for instance, this particular paragraph has not been formatted as normal. So I can double click on it and then format it as normal. This becomes useful when you want to change a particular style in your document while leaving the rest the same. So say, for instance, that I have identified headings in my document and I now want to change those headings with the click of a button. The first thing I would need to do is to define which text in my document should represent those headings. So in my document, you'll see that I've just called them heading one, heading two, heading three. In your document, it might be introduction, literature review, methodology, but basically you'd need to tell Word that these are the different levels of headings that you want to use for these headings. So here I'm going to select all my heading ones and format it as heading one. So now you can see that all the parts of the document that I formatted as heading one has now taken on the formatting of heading one. If I want to change this, I can go to my styles pane and then modify the style. So here you can modify the font as I've shown you earlier. I want to change the size of this font to 14 and I want to, for instance, have it centered. It is currently centered and I want to, for instance, have it normal case. So currently you can see that it's all capitalized. So if you go to the bottom left hand corner over here, you'll see a button which provides further formatting options. If you click on font, this will give you further options to modify the font of your particular style. So you will see here under fix is an option where I can undo the all caps, where you can make it all small caps, where you can make it superscript or subscript. Here you can also change between bold, italic, etc. And here you can also change the size of your, of your particular font as well as the color of your particular font. If I want to, for instance, make this font orange, and I want it to be underlined with two lines. And I want it to be subscript. These are options that I can change here. And when I click OK, it means all the heading ones will take on 
this particular formatting that I've created for this heading. If I want to make further changes to this particular heading style, I can go back to my dialog box and I could, for instance, change the way it's numbered. So here I can remove the numbering or I can use outline numbering. This means that heading 1 will be 1, heading 2 will be 1.1, heading 3 will be 1.1.1. If I click OK, my headings will take on these different numbering styles. But now you'll see that I haven't defined heading 2, heading 3 and heading 4. So I can do that by highlighting the particular heading and telling Word that I want this text to be formatted as heading 2 by defining it as heading 2. Heading 3 can be defined as heading 3. So here you can see that these headings take on the formatting that I changed in heading 1. If I want my heading 1 to reflect somewhat the way my other headings look, I can go back to heading 1 to do that. So now you can see that my headings are very neat and Word knows what I formatted as heading 1, 2, 3 and 4. I can do this for the rest of my document as well. It's also good practice to do this up front before you even start writing your document. So there are many options that you can use to play around with using these headings. And once you use the heading styles, it then opens up a whole list of other formatting and navigation options that you can use, especially when your document becomes really long. To change the formatting of a footnote, you can find the style for a footnote in the styles pane the same way you did with the headings. However, important to note with a footnote is that there are two parts of a footnote. The one part is the footnote text. So this will be the text that you actually type into the footnote. And the other part is the footnote reference, which is usually the superscript number. In your style pane, you'll see that there's a style for footnote reference and also a style for footnote text. So footnote reference will usually be the number of the footnote. If you want to modify the style, you can modify it the same way you modify headings. One notable feature about a footnote reference is that it'll usually be superscript because that's how the number shows up. If you want to change this, you can go to the font option and you can undo the superscript. If you do this, the footnote reference will just show up like a normal number in your document. So now you can see that it looks like a normal number in the text and it looks like a normal number in the actual footnote. If you want to modify the footnote text, you will need to modify the footnote text style. If you want to increase the font of your footnote text, you can do that. If you want to increase the line spacing of your footnote text, you can do that. And there are other options that you can also add to your footnote text. So consider, for instance, the heading for the references in your document. Usually, the heading for references or bibliography looks like heading 1. Perhaps you want it to look like heading 1, but you don't want it to be numbered like heading 1. What you can do is you can then create a new style based on heading 1. And to do so, you can use the new style button in the styles pane. You can then decide what name you want to give your new style. I'm going to call it References. And then you can tell Word that you want the style based on either normal or heading 1, heading 2, heading 3 or body text or whatever you're using. I want this to be based on heading 1. I want it to look similar but not to be the same as heading 1. So I'm going to say base this on heading 1 and you will see that the is now a number added to this particular style. I don't want it to have a number, so I'm going to go to numbering and remove that. So now you can see that the references heading looks like heading one, but it's not actually part of heading one and it won't be part of that sequential numbering for heading one. Once you've used the styles to define different parts of your document, 
you can then use the navigation pane which becomes a really useful tool especially when you've got a very long document to find the navigation pane you need to go to view and then there's a button for the navigation pane you can either navigate through the individual pages of your document or you can view it as a table of contents this also allows you to jump around between different parts in your document which you've defined according to your various headings.